Welcome to Better Room. In this video, I'm going to talk about important questions that are going to be asked in your anatomy paper 2. So first, let us see the syllabus. So we have unit 5, abdomen, unit 6, hind limb and pelvis, unit 7, histology and unit 8, embryology. As you can see, as compared to the anatomy paper 1 syllabus, the syllabus of paper 2 is very big. Okay, it is very vast. There are a lot of structures in the abdomen, histology and embryology. They are like completely spread subjects, right? They are very big. So it is very important that you look for questions that are frequently asked in the exam. Otherwise, it is very difficult to score good in your NHP paper two. So let us start with the important questions for LAQ. If you don't know what is LAQ, LAQ stands for long answer type questions. So they are essay questions which you have to study very thoroughly and you have to write them in detail. Okay, so describe in detail the oscoxy of ox. Write about the differences between oscoxy of male and female animal. Compare oscoxy of ox with that of horse, dog and pig. Now, this is a very big question. Usually in your exam, they will not ask you uh, this question like this. So what they'll do, they'll either, uh, they'll either omit one of these animals or they'll omit this section. Okay, so they will not ask you this entire question rather than that and they'll just ask you in parts okay so what is oscoxy it is the hip bone so you have to describe in detail the hip bone you have to uh, mention the acetabulum cavity you have to mention the obturator for even don't forget about them then differences between male and female animal and compare with that of horse dog and pig and i've already talked about the pattern that you have to write uh, in osteology question in the question uh, video about paper one but again I'll talk about them. So first, make a diagram on the left side. Okay, this is not compulsory. This is how I like to do it because this will give a very good impression. Okay, then do the labeling on the right side. Always and always, this is a must that you should mention the title of your diagram below it. Okay, so if I'm drawing an oscox or ox, so I'll draw the diagram, I label it, and then just below it, I write oscox of ox and whichever view it is, okay? View is also very important. And in bones like, see, here is femur of ox, then I'll write, if I'm drawing left femur of ox, I'll write left femur of ox, lateral view, or medial view, whichever view it is, okay? So this is very important that you must mention the view. You have to mention the side of the bone, like if it is the left bone, like bone of the left side or the bone of the right side, okay? And always mention the species. If you are just writing oscoxe, then marks are going to be deducted, okay? There will be loss of marks and don't be sorry for that. You have to mention oscoxy of ox. Then write about the differences between uh, male and female and compare with horse, dog and pig. Very similar in case of species differentiation. So if you are comparing the oscoxy of ox with that of horse, what you'll do, you'll make a very small diagram for the oscoxy of horse and then label only the points which are different, okay? Don't do the whole labeling but also don't skip the diagram altogether. If you have time, if you don't have time, then it is okay. You cannot do anything. But if you have time, then make a very small diagram. Okay. And just uh, label the important things. I'm not saying that label the structures which are similar. Label things which are different. Okay. So describe in detail the fever of ox and compare with that of horse, dog and pig. Both of these questions, oscox and femur, they are very important. Okay, and just like I said, let me give you an example here. Compare with that of horse. So what you'll do, you'll make a small femur of ox. Now there's a third trochanter that is not present in cattle. So what you'll do, you'll label third trochanter like that. Okay, so these things which are different, sometimes they are present, sometimes uh, they are present in ox, but in horse, dog or pig, their structure is different, right? So that, uh, for example, in ox, the trochanteric ridge is oblique, right? It is oblique, but in horse, it is straight or vertical. So what you'll do, you'll label trochanteric ridge is vertical, like this. Okay, it will save you time and it will also make a very good impression. Then describe in detail the tibia of ox and compare with that of horse, dog and pig. Describe in detail the muscles of leg and pest region, a very big question. In the previous video, I've already discussed how you should attempt such type of questions. So basically, you have to make a table, right? The muscles of the leg and pest region, then classify them in subgroups. So extensor flexor like that. 
okay so extensor group and then serial number name of muscle function of the muscle origin insertion blood supply and nerve supply all these things you have to mention and that is why they are very lengthy questions but making a table is the best way to attempt them because it gives a very good impression it is very easy for the examiner to see all these things and of course it saves time because you don't have to write any grammar in it okay you don't need to write that this muscle originates from this site you just write the name of the site okay because you are making a table then describe in detail the joints of hind limb of ox again you have to make a table in this so joints of hind limb this is the heading then you will make a table serial number then name of the joint type uh, type of the joint then movement allowed by the joint and then bones associated so proximal distal and the ligaments okay uh, one thing that i have not mentioned is that you have to draw the diagram for muscles and joints as well okay so but for each muscle you don't have to make individual diagram you just make one single diagram that will incorporate all the muscles so describe in detail the hock joint in ox so first this, uh, do this question when you are preparing uh, in this, of course, you will mention the hock joint, but sometimes a question is asked on hock joint itself. So this is a very big question. I'll not recommend this question to you uh, if you are writing it in the exam. But of course, if you have prepared, then you can definitely write in detail. When you are writing in detail, you have to draw the diagram very thoroughly. Okay, so if you are uh, writing the detail of the hock joint, then you have to make a very detailed diagram of the hock joint. But if you are uh, writing the answer on the joints of the hind limb so there are a lot of joints so don't uh, make the ligaments and everything you just make a diagram of the hind limb and then label the joints okay nothing else so the joints of hind limb question is very easy as compared to the detail of the jaw hog joint in ox then what is lumbosacral plexus very 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 important question the most asked or the most frequent question in paper two okay lumbosacral plexus very easy as compared to the brachial plexus in my opinion at least so write its lo location origin and end list its various branches describe in detail the pathway of sciatic or tibial nerve okay so lumbosacral plexus is a very big question definitely shorter than the brachial plexus and i have made a video on this so if you want you can check this uh, video i'll mark it okay so what is lumbosacral plexus like uh, write its location origin and enlist its various branches and describe in detail the pathway of sciatic or tibial nerve so lumbosacral is a very important question the most frequent frequently asked question in the paper 2 exam and i have already made a video on this so in that video i have gone over the various nerves of the lumbosacral plexus very quickly and i have also mentioned some tricks on how you can remember them then what you have to do here so see lumbosacral plexus I have made a hyphen there. So lumbo is different, sacral is different. So you have to enlist it like that. So lumbo, what are the three nerves in lumbo? What are the three nerves in sacral? Then in sacral, we have the sciatic nerve or the tibial nerve. So what is going on here? So when you are writing the pathway of a nerve, they will ask you to write about all the nerves. They'll just ask you to write about one nerve. And in case of lumbosacral plexus, they ask about the sciatic nerve. Now, tibial nerve is the continuation of sciatic nerve. So if they are asking sciatic nerve, then you have to write the entire pathway. If they are asking about the tibial nerve, just write from the point where tibial nerve starts. Okay, so any collateral nerves that are starting before the tibial nerve, you don't need to write them. Okay, but most of the time they ask about the entire sciatic nerve. Then describe in detail the branches of external iliac artery. Again, important question. Describe in detail the topography of rumen write about the location of rumen reticulum and omasum uh, rum, reticulum omasum and abomasum ox describe the internal structure of rumen very easy question okay uh, this question was asked in our exam then describe in detail the kidney of ox and compare with that of horse dog and pig so i've already made a video on this you can check that out and list the branches of abdominal aorta describe the various branches of celiac artery one thing to note here is this word and list whenever this is given and list the branches of something or and list something you just need to write the names okay don't waste your time on describing the various branches of abdominal aorta because this is a mistake that many students make don't make this mistake you are not going to get any bonus marks from this 
Why? Because it is not asked in your question at all. And list the branches of abdominal aorta. Describe the various branches of celiac artery. I have made a video on celiac artery and again you have to draw the diagram for celiac artery. Okay, sometimes the question has two parts. So branches of abdominal aorta and celiac artery. So you have you might have a confusion that which diagram should I make? So in this case, you will draw the diagram of celiac artery. Why? Because see the word here, describe. In case of branches of abdominal aorta, it was enlist. So you just have to write the names. Then you will draw the diagram of the celiac artery and will describe the various branches. Describe in detail the uterus of cow and compare with that of horse, dog and pig. I've made a video on this and the penis of ox as well. They are very important questions from the reproductive system. Describe in detail the histological structure of ovary. Mention the various follicles present in the ovary. And describe the de in detail the microscopic or histological structure of testate. Very frequently asked questions from histology section. Describe in detail the classification of connective tissue and write about the various cells of connective tissue. Not so much asked, but I st uh, still mention it here because sometimes this question is asked and then students get confused. What are we supposed to write in this? Okay, th so after completing all these big questions, I'll suggest that you should go over this question at least one time before your exam. Okay, so if by chance this question is asked in your exam, you don't get confused. So describe uh, in detail the histological structure of cerebrum. Very, very important uh, question. <clears throat> A lot of time it is asked in SAQ. So, but one time, uh, one single time actually, it was asked as an LAQ. That is why I mentioned here. But usually it is asked in SAQ. So you can prepare it as a short asking type question. Describe in detail the process of gastrulation in mammals and birds and write various derivatives of the germ lip. So see, one thing that you might have noticed here that histology and embryology are very big units. Okay, they are like entire subjects on themselves. But in histology and in embryology, a very selected portion is asked in the exam as LAQ. Okay, so in histology, we just said, uh, saw here that testes, ovaries, they are asked. Sometimes connective tissue is asked. Other questions are not asked. Okay. If they are asked, they are in SAQ or OT. Okay. Like they'll ask you the histology of stomach as a short answer type question. I'll talk about them later. And in case of embryology, they'll only ask you questions from the starting portion of the embryology. Okay. So like the fetal membranes, the placenta, the gastrulation, like that. Even uh, they can ask you short answer type question on moral line like that but they won't ask you uh, questions like write in detail the development of the inter integer integumentary system sorry for my stuttering there or describe in detail the development of the skeletal system or the digestive system no they won't ask you this uh, anything like that in your exam even ot won't come from this topic like it is very rare of course it is a, if it is an external exam then they have every right to ask the questions because they are in the syllabus, but it is very rare. Okay, so what are the important topics in embryology? Gastrulation, very, very important. Then where is the derivative germ there? Describe in detail the fetal membranes of the mammals and birds. Now, I've rephrased the question here as describe in detail the fetal membranes and compare those of mammals and birds. Why I've done that? Because when they have asked the first question here. Describe in detail the fetal membranes of birds and animals. You have to compare between mammals and birds. Okay. So what you will do? For the membranes which are similar, you will just write them as is. And when there is difference between mammals and birds, you will just like make a note or star or whatever. And then you will write that this is different. So in mammals, this is the case. In birds, this is the case. You have to mention the differences. Okay. Describe in detail the classification of placenta with examples. There are uh, Classification of placenta is very big, so there are a lot of classification, but it is very easy question. You just have to mention the name, the basic uh, quality on which the classification is done, and then you have to make a very short diagram, like you don't even need to label it. So if it is discord, just make a discord. If it is cotyledon, then show that these are the cotyledons, like that. Very small diagrams you have to make, but of course, there are uh, numerous diagrams. <laughs> okay, there's not one diagram. You have to draw the diagrams for a lot of types and the basis of classification is also very important in this. So on the basis of uh, histology, on the basis of that blood supply like that, connection between maternal, loss of maternal tissue like that, you have to 
classify the placenta and make sure that you write the examples. If you are not writing the examples, you are not going to get any marks. Then describe in detail the development of nervous system, heart and urinary system. All these topics are not extremely important. Okay, most of the times, gastrulation, fetal membrane and placenta is all that you have to study. But don't skip these topics after you have uh, completed all these topics, these big topics, then you should come to this. Okay, I'm talking about when you are preparing for your exam. So look at the more important topics in which I've made three texts. Okay, so uterus, penis, Oscoxe, femur, tibia, lumbosacral plexus, extremely important, and topography of rumen, kidney, celiac artery. These are very important questions. First, you should prepare them, and then you should go for uh, these questions. So, development of nervous system, neurulation, you have angiogenesis, cardiogenesis, development of urinary system, nephrogenesis. Okay, these are not frequently asked questions, but if they are asked, and if you haven't studied, them then you cannot write anything embryology is very difficult portion so i'll recommend that at least go for these systems you can skip integumentary system you can skip skeletal and digestive system in embryology okay they are very rarely asked even in ot in laq they will never ask these questions now for short answer type question these are certain topics that i've mentioned which are very very important so exercise sex glands of dog types of ova Histology of fundus of stomach, juxta glomerular apparatus, oviduct of fowl, histology of lymph node, corpus luteum, peritoneum, histology of cerebrum, folds of pelvic peritoneum, and stomach of horse and dog. Okay, so these are the topics for L short answer type questions. In short answer type question, it is not compulsory to make a diagram, but if you have time and you want to make a very good impression, then you can make a very small diagram. Okay. So this is it for the LAQ and SAQ. For OT type question, they can definitely ask you OT from anywhere, right? Because paper two is very difficult. It has a very vast syllabus. So they can ask you OT type question from all the topics, but 90% of your OT will be covered from these topics here that I've written for LAQ and SAQ, okay? So you don't have to worry about them too much. So this is it for this video. I hope you found this video useful. If so, hit the like button. Share this video with your friends. They'll definitely thank you. And if you haven't, then subscribe to my channel. Thank you.